tie up a few, uh, at least one of my favorite streamer patterns. It's called Conehead the Barbarian. And it's basically a variation or combination of a Clouser Minnow and a uh, Bend Back. You know, both wonderful uh, inverted flies. Came up with this fly when I was living in uh, Central Texas, fishing in the uh, hill country. And a lot of the streams there have a limestone bottom, and limestone has these nice little cracks in it that uh, love to eat Clouser eyes. So I figured if I could have a use a cone head instead of a clouser eye, maybe it would actually get them out of the rocks. And what I found is that actually you could. If you uh, actually kind of wiggle your rod tip, you could actually pop the fly out of a crease. And actually is great if you're fishing for white bass or stripers and there's a feeding frenzy going on, you don't have to re-rig your outfit. This fly also is probably one of the, the better flies I had for uh, catching flounder on the Texas coast too. It works for redfish, speckled trout. And it works for brown trout, cutthroat, rainbow trout in the Yellowstone River and areas of Montana. Good uh, largemouth bass fly. Kind of a nice all-around pattern can be dyed in a variety of colors and sizes to imitate different things. First thing we need to do is make a bend back hook. What we want to do, I bent this one already, but normally you can take a pair of pliers and bend them. And you don't want a flimsy pair of needle nose pliers. These are about the minimum. I actually use a pair of electrical pliers. The other thing you can do is if you have a good solid vise, don't do this on a cheap vise. Set it in and then bend it back. Be careful not to get your finger. I guess a good reason to fish uh, and tie barbless. We'll put the hook in the vise upside down, close it up. And actually, I should do there too before I do that. We need to put a cone head on. I'm going to put on a, a large trout sized cone head, which is about a quarter inch in diameter. This is gold, you know, for a lot of patterns I'll use silver. It's not super critical because we're going to cover this up with tape in a moment to kind of give a minnow head shape. And this actually free spins at the moment. Since we're going to wrap something over it, what I want to do is build up a thread base. I'll do first, a little better living through chemicals, put a little super glue on that straight away. Let's start our thread and build up a base. Cut off the tag in. What we want to do is just occasionally check and make sure that it's built up enough. This is basically an A type thread. This is uh, this particular thread I'm using is uh, a Wapsi 280 denier, but most of the threads are listed as A diameter. And that's about right. I'll actually push up so it's almost on, there's just a little bit of a thread in front of the cone. So I'll do is come back, do a quick half hit it to a whip finish. And we're through on the front end of the hook with the thread. What I'm going to do now is put a little drop of glue, super glue here. Don't need too much. Push the cone forward. So basically we've got a, a fixed cone on the, he on the uh, head of the fly. And start a thread behind. Build up a little bit of a thread base. And we're going to tie a wing. And this fly is fixed, fished upside down so it doesn't catch on the bottom. Let's do a color that will actually work for trout, work for redfish, work for a variety of species. I'm going to use for the wing a material called strong fuzzy fiber kind of a kinky synthetic fiber. Another fiber I like to use a lot too, it's very similar, is bozo hair. But this crinkle almost gives a scaled effect. What it also does too is the crinkle gives a lot of bulk, or gives the appearance of bulk. So we have a fairly lightweight fly. It's easy to cast on light rod. What I'm going to do is to cut the end, and sometimes you have some stray fibers underneath, I'll just kind of pick them out like you would with natural hair. I think I got a little bit of taper of the wing by cutting it slightly uneven. I'm going to tie this in right behind the cone. So I'll measure it. I probably want it about two to three gap or two to three shank lengths long. Switch hands and secure it. And we'll have a few loose ends. Don't worry about those. We can just snip those off. I'm actually going to tie some more on top of this anyway, so don't get too worried about that. Next thing I'll do is I'll let's tie in a little bit of a side out of some orange. I'm going to tie this on top of that. Straight fiber there. 
Snip that. Secure that in the same manner. Let's add a little flash. This is actually Flash Blue Mirage. It's kind of a combo color of gold and pearlescence. This would work real well. It's, sometimes I like to mix like holographic and pearlescent together. They kind of work off each other and look kind of fishy, almost like they're moving when they're sitting still. Okay. Good way to tie in Flash is take a piece that's twice as long as you need it and fold it around the thread. Let's do that again. And we intensely don't want this flash to be even on the end. What we can do is, by doing that, just slide it down to where you want it, right on top of the hook shank. Now we're going to tie a little bit of brown fuzzy fiber on top. Sometimes what I do too to kind of get material to stick together. And this works with a lot of materials. Just kind of roll it and twist it. It's nice and compact. Let's get rid of that little bad piece up here. Wrap over it. Now I use a fluorescent orange or red thread because this actually will look kind of like the gills on a small bait fish. And we're pretty much done with our thread. We'll make some snips. Kind of taper the wing. So you don't have a blunt end on it. And you got a fairly full wing that's got a nice profile that doesn't weigh a lot. And do a whip finish or a half hitch. Let's do a half. And whip finish about three turns is plenty. Snip that off. That fly like that, if you cemented it, would fish fine. You can fish that as a finished fly like that. You have a great fly, basically a conehead bend back. But it doesn't look real sexy, and we want to build up a little bulk. So we're going to use a little uh, lure tape. You can use any type of tape you want. This is actually, this is like uh, some stuff called hollow form tape. But most of this tape is usually made for, uh, for fishing lures. And they started to become popular in saltwater flies. This would work. Colored duct tape is an option. Clear packing tape would work. Just something that will kind of build up a head because we'll put eyes on it in a minute. We'll cut a piece of lower tape to uh, kind of a mountain, reverse mountain shape. We'll make a V cut here. Yes, we'll cut it down to there. Then we're going to cut out the front. It looks like a couple little twin mountain peaks there. Okay, so this stuff has a release tape on the back, a release paper, I should say. And the toughest part of this fly sometimes is uh, getting the release tape off of uh, this. You probably have this experience with decals of some variety. I'm going to take and put that kind of little peak, the little valley there, the little pass on top of the uh, cone. And we'll roll this around the cone. The reason we made that kind of concave cut in the front is so we don't cover the hook eye. We basically got a, a tape cone around the fly. We need to trip this down, obviously, so we can hook a fish. What we'll do is we'll go onto the bottom and take my scissors and make a V cut. A little V cut in the bottom. You kind of see those gill plates from the red thread. Let's turn it on its side. Come forward. Make a V cut there. This is definitely where a vise that turns helps out. You can do this by hand if you don't have a vise that turns. We got a little loose tab, but we can fix that. Now we're starting to look like a minnow head. We want our fish, our little fish, bait fish to be able to see. And what we'll do is we'll take some adhesive eyes. This is like a two and a half millimeter size. This will work fine for this fly, anywhere from two and a half to three and a half millimeter. These are pretty common in saltwater tying. What we want to do, since we've got a rounded shape and these are flat, this is a Bob Popovich trick, but taking this bend, the eyes before you put them on. 
It makes it much easier to get them to adhere. One eye on that side. One eye on the back. Now we're starting to look like a fish, aren't we? What the next thing we need to do is overcoat this tape and eye head to make it more durable. I usually use five minute epoxy, a light coat of that. Uh, some of the dipping coatings like uh, Softex, or Softex is a, a solvent based one you can dip the head of this into. You could take flex cement and dip the head into it, just make sure you clean out the eye. There's a material called soft body, it's a water based polyurethane that uh, English Choice sells. You could use that to paint on the head too and this adds a little more durability to it. So we'll, get a, we'll go ahead and mix some epoxy. And the trick with epoxy is the epoxy sets up from a chemical reaction. The nice thing about epoxy is it retains the same amount of mass. Uncured is cured where all the solvent-based things, even water-based things, will shrink. You use a bodkin to mix. A lot of times I'll use a toothpick, kind of a disposable bodkin. Okay, I'm take some of this epoxy and coat the head of the fly. Just kind of quickly coat the outside. And a rotary device works really well for doing this. If not, just hook it on a pair of uh, forceps or an X-Acto knife handle works pretty well. And this will hold the eyeballs on, add a little depth to it. And we're going to want to put a little epoxy on the inside of the head too. Well, let's, uh, let's set this in rotisserie so I don't have to turn it. And the epoxy will turn it around or keep it from falling off. And just let it go. Go out, tie another fly, do whatever. Go back in about five, four and a half minutes and it should be uh, set well enough to uh, pull out of the rotisserie. Now we have a finished cone head, the Barbarian, with the epoxy head on it. See how that adds depth to it? You can see, almost see the eyes from the front. It's a good fly right here. We can go catch some redfish. We can catch brown trout. We can catch bass, sunfish, stripers, flounder. About anything you think of, they'll eat a uh, bait fish. And it's a good fly because it fishes upside down. It's weedless, like actually more weedless than a clouser.